how many peer-reviewed studies have there been on the safety of GM crops on animals and how many on humans? How is the quality of studies that have been done? I remember talking to Dr. Arpad Pustai about eight, nine years ago, and he discounted the industry research as basically industrial research that had nothing to do with, hu with human food safety. He said basically there was uh, maybe at that time 25 academic research studies. Um, the industry puts out a list of 1,700 here, and that's been looked at by scientists like Judy Carman and others that basically eliminate almost all of them as entirely irrelevant. You know, the size of the breast of the chicken has nothing to do with human health. So I actually don't know the number, because it, it's a question of how, what you criteria you establish, whether it's considered an academically uh, acceptable peer-reviewed study. But even the peer-reviewed study, for example, that Monsanto put out in 1996 uh, in the journal Nutrition, according to Dr. Pustai, was way below the normal requirements needed for publication in that journal. And they didn't do some basic stuff. It left out a lot of information, in fact. It was discovered later showing vast differences that they had denied. And it turns out they paid for its publication. They paid a, a page fee for its publication. So it's, it's hard to know. And then, of course, Monsanto will ghostwrite certain articles. These articles came out, this fantastic, over a million documents from Monsanto came, is now, are now public, and they've been going through, the lawyers have been going through it. And we find out that when the IARC was being, was being uh, prepared, the, 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 the committee that was going to determine that Roundup was carcinogen, they prepared this entire anti-IARC uh, uh, program, and one was to ghostwrite studies. And, they, and one person was giving his yearly review of what he did and Monsanto and said, yep, Ghost wrote this. And they're claiming they don't Ghost write. So it's hard to know, you know if something is actually a real study or one of those Monsanto fake studies. And, and Shelley, your expertise is conflict of interest. You might want to chime in here. One of your expertise. Well, first of all, I, th I found about 30 studies in the scientific literature and peer-reviewed literature animal studies that showed adverse effects. Um, uh, I first found 26, and then there some added ones just came out. For example, th they did a study on, uh, on rats, and, um, and they, they found that in their study of the rats that were fel uh, fed the GMO, that they had abnormalities in, in the uh, gut of the rat. Um, uh, and, um, and, and there's the study. Nobody, it wasn't reported in the press. It wasn't discussed. Nobody made any mention of it. Uh, that's because it didn't appear in one of the six leading medical journals in the country. <laughs> Usually, if you want to get press, you put it into the... New England Journal of Medicine or whatever. Um, but um, there's no human studies. We're all part of the human study, but nobody is do doing. There's no human studies in peer-reviewed literature. They'd have to take human beings and give them GMOs, and I don't know. They'd have to look for something. So there, there's been no studies like that. In terms of conflicts of interest, it's endemic in this whole business. Fortunately, a number of the respected journals require the scientists to declare their conflicts of interest. So whenever I see a study, I always look for that declaration. And when I find out it's funded by Monsanto or any of the other companies, I really disregard it because I don't trust uh, any of those studies. So that's something to look for whenever you hear about a study. Uh, if it's in a journal that requires disclosure, then they're supposed to tell you where their money is coming from.